Welcome to Proteus. This is a shooter inspired by classic shooters made by Bounding Box Software. It came out in early access about two years ago and just now has reached version 1.0. I've been playing Quake on my Patreon, so I've been on a bit of a classic shooter bent lately. And when I played a few levels of this, I instantly fell in love with it. It is, oh, I just, let's just play it and then you'll see what I mean. So yeah, I have played a couple missions, but I didn't get too far into the included campaign, which is the Kingdom Between. Let's start a new save. Uh, there's a lot of difficulty settings. Let's go with hard. One up from default. And I love that screen like melting effect that you just saw there. You'll see it a bunch more. It's really cool. Everything's on fire and... Well, I don't know if we're in a cell or something like that. I don't know what this is. It feels kind of like a cell. But then again, why would there be stairs in a cell? Anyway, a cat screaming behind me, which you can probably hear. And we are free to leave that room. <laughs> this is just kind of like a mini tutorial. Just like, hey, this is how you jump. This is how you crouch. Things like that. Oh yeah, and sprinting. But yeah, as you can probably see, it's like retro inspired in a lot of ways. Just speaking aesthetically, it's retro inspired in that it's like pixelated graphics, but it also has a lot of very modern features. Lots of um, dynamic lighting and dynamic shadows and normal mapping and advanced. I think it even has like volumetric lights and stuff. And ah, you'll see even more as we go along. Like, it just looks very pretty. And I absolutely adore that aesthetic of, like, old pixelated graphics mixed with really advanced uh, modern lighting and, and effects. I just think it looks so pretty. The only thing that looks a little weird is that the sprites and the way they respond to moving around them is... I don't know, it just looks a little weird. But I'm not too familiar with how it actually looked when you played old shooters that used 2D sprites. Like, Quake doesn't use 2D sprites for the enemies. So I'm not sure what 2D sprites would look like when you're trying to rotate around them. I understand that's a kind of hard, awkward thing to deal with. Because sprites are 2D and you're going around it, obviously. I love the beams of competing colors shooting and just releasing so many particles. Oh, so pretty. I love particles. I absolutely love how the rain looks. Especially the rain interacting with surfaces. I just think that's gorgeous. Like that, plus the light reflecting off of the rain. Oh, it's so pretty. And that red light getting like distorted by the raindrops. Gorgeous. And then you mix in 2D elements like this. It just looks so gorgeous. Rune acquired. I didn't actually play long enough to figure out what the runes do. Or the other resource that you might have seen up there. Um, does it say here what the other one is called? I don't even remember what the other resource is called. But yeah, I collected some of that resource, but I didn't get far enough to actually spend it on anything. Organic detected. Nexus point activated. I think those are respawn points. Yeah. We've gained the ability to use our fists and we can use both of them at the same time. Hehehe. <laughs> 
A gun? Thank God. Your fists are not very good. Ow. I can't remember what difficulty I played on before. But this is a bit tough. Enemies do a lot of damage. Oh, there's the melting effect again. Yes. Melt my screen. I love it. So we have the same thing that we see in Quake, where it tells you how many enemies there are on the entire map, and also how many secrets there are. So 107 kills, and 5 secrets to find. Oh yeah, so about these zombies, some more cool features, things that I really like about them. They have, um, you can basically dismember them depending on where you shoot them. You know, heads, arms, legs, like if we shoot that leg off, well, that leg comes off. Also, uh, it seems like each zombie has about 2000 gallons of blood and I love it. They just explode with blood everywhere and they burn up in a really cool way. But yeah, the blood splatters everywhere, even the freaking ceiling, and then it drips down. It's gross and ridiculous and over the top and great. <laughs> you can even shoot the body too, which is extra gross and wasteful. Ew. So the way the pistol works is single fire. Well, actually, it shoots automatically, but just kind of slowly. And if you aim down sights, of course, it's more accurate, but it does burst fire. Bursts of three. I love how kinetic it is. Like, every time you shoot, you can see there's a lot of screen shake. And there's a lot of feedback, just visually, sound-wise, everything. Like, it feels so... It's so weighty using these guns, even just a lowly pistol. Armor shards, of course. It's a classic shooter, why would there be anything else? Is there something up there? Is that like a secret that I can get to? I don't think I got all the secrets when I played this before. Hmm. Look at him just hanging out. Jiggling. Oh, I didn't make it. Surprisingly, lava actually hurts you very little. Like, it does hurt. You don't want to stay in it, but it really doesn't hurt you that bad. Yeah, I should jump from the highest point. That makes sense. Oh, now we get that heart thing. Ah, uh, ore fragment. That's the other thing. There's runes and ore fragments. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to spend either of those. New enemy time. Zombie things, but ones with guns. Oh yeah, and we get the shotgun. 
Okay, so the way the shotgun works is, well, like normal if you don't aim down the sights, and if you aim down the sights, it gets more accurate and charges up, and that makes it give off uh, kind of like a flame effect. It'll actually set the enemy on fire. So, good for putting them on fire and also for sort of sniping with the shotgun. Not that it's quite that accurate, but it's pretty accurate. You can see they're flashing after I shoot them. Well, if they explode, you can't see that they're flashing. <laughs> but when they flash after I shoot them, that's them taking damage from the fire effect, I think. Like... Eh. Yeah, these die in one hit kind of anyway. There we go. Flash, flash, flash. I don't need to charge up to kill them in one hit because they're just lowly zombies. sure if this game does secrets like Quake does, where you like see something in the world that seems out of place and you hit it or something like that and it opens up a secret door. So far all the secrets I've found have just been like looking in every nook and cranny. They haven't been uh, hitting the wall kind of thing like in Quake. Oh yeah, don't want my fists for these. Need a red key to use that. How many secrets were there again? Five secrets. Oh, right, this is one of the secrets. If you can even really call it that. I mean, I guess they're being pretty gentle with you for this first level. Oh, new enemy type. Those things. Got it. You can pop these bubbles. Well, okay, that popped the entire thing. <laughs> and this looks like a Nintendo Switch. Just like a real bulky one. Oh, it's an auto map, yeah. There is a map. Hmm. It's not the easiest thing to use. Like, it's not the easiest to parse this. This kind of is a huge mess. For the first couple levels that I played, I really didn't need it. Though it might help you find every last secret. Oh yeah, this was another secret here. <laughs> I see you. Oh, pretty much full on shotgun. Might as well use that. Blurg. Oh yeah, we have explosive barrels, of course. Hee hee hee. So pretty. Oh, we get the, I think it said the name, 
for like a split second, but I already forgot it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so the way that works is if I open up the menu when you hold down Q, it shows you the apparently up to three different types of weapons you can have for each ammo type. So these, I think they're called shredders. The shredders use pistol ammo. So essentially it's kind of what you'd expect where it uses the same ammo as the pistol. It's less efficient per bullet, like it does less damage per bullet, but it shoots way, way, way faster. So you can shoot with one or the other or both, which makes it proportionally less accurate. You really only want to use both if you're pretty much up in the face of something because it makes it very inaccurate. Just shooting with one is actually quite accurate. Like. If I aim at that O2 on that sign, it's pretty much staying within that. I think the reticle is kind of lying a little bit. It looks like it only gets twice as large, but honestly, it's way more accurate than the reticle looks like when you just single fire. But yeah, this kind of reminds me of like, uh, almost like the Tri Shotgun, which wasn't in the base game in Quake, but it's in... Um, I think it's called the Widowmaker officially, but I call it the Tri Shotgun. <laughs> um, it's in the Arcane Dimensions mod for Quake. Kind of reminds me of that. Where it's just, you know, you end up with shit tons of pistol ammo and then you never use it because it's too weak. Because it's just too slow. So it's kind of nice that there's actually something to make use of all that ammo. For a relatively weak ammo type, you know. Good way to uh, keep it, ow, keep it relevant. So I suppose if ammo is in short supply, it would be wise to take out the high, the high value targets that shoot things at you and then uh, with the shredders and then use your pistol for the zombies. I don't know if that's actually... Oh, is this a secret? It was. I don't know if that's actually really necessary. I don't know how strict they are with ammo, how stringy. Everything just looks and sounds so good. Just reloading these. Oh, yes. Like, how are you even doing that? You don't have any free hands to reload anything. You got three hands or something? Very low on pistol rounds, but plenty of shotgun. Even more shotgun. Pretty much full on pistol ammo now. 
totally full now. It is in a way nice that there's these like nexus oh, nexus points, which act as save points, because it means you can't save scum, which is something I did all the time in Quake. Because like when you can. It doesn't make sense not to do it, you know? So I kind of appreciate the fact that it's not even an option. It forces me to adapt. Oh right, we take this thing up. Ow. I really don't think I need to worry too much about ammo, honestly. Especially for this first level. I think I can just go all in. Does that make it go down? Does it do anything else? I guess not. The dynamic music is really nice, too. The way it kicks in and out for combat, it's very smooth. Hold on. I think there actually might be something over there. Can I move like I do in Quake, where I like go around a corner backwards, basically? Mmm, <laughs> it doesn't seem to work that way like it does in Quake. Oh, there's nothing even up there. Wait. That's where he came from, isn't it? Yeah. That's not a secret. That's a nothing. Wait, two ways to go. Is this... No, that's where I need to go. What's in here? Oh. Not really a secret. But... A nice bonus. Wait. Oh, there's two of these rooms that look pretty much identical. Red key. A sort of secret? Not marked as a secret, but feels like a secret. We are at 3 out of 5 secrets and 93 out of 107 enemies, so almost done. They got some range.
So do I. I'm so used to playing Quake, I, my finger constantly wants to go to F5 to do a quick save. <laughs> Now we have the red key, so we can use that. Melt. Melt my fucking face. Oh, I missed two secrets. Zero deaths, though. And I did it on hard. Yeah, there's a rate this map thing, which makes sense when you're playing custom maps, which this game does have, by the way. It's that's one of their kind of like core features, I think, is custom maps and uh, an editor and a whole like, you know, community map thing that's built into the game. You don't need to go out of it to download maps or anything like that, which I'll probably be taking a look at after the campaign. But it doesn't make much sense to rate the maps when they're the official maps. I mean, what are they going to do? Use the <laughs> I, I mean, I guess. I guess if everyone says the map sucked, they might go in and change it, so I suppose it could be useful. Yeah, so there seems to be a kind of, like, overworld system. Like a map progression... Yeah, overworld map. So you can go back and replay ones to find things you missed, so I missed... I missed three of those ore fragments? Two secrets and three ore fragments. Like... The map was so small, how did I miss that much? That's how I felt every time I finished a Quake map, and it's like, three out of twelve secrets. I'm like, what? Where? Where? <laughs> Dear God. But, yeah, let's continue to this one. There's eight ore fragments. This is research. This research facility is now the main contact point for the Chaos Dimension. A train is used to bring weapons and ammunition to the rest of the asteroid. Oh, right, we get the doggy boys. Look at him. Look at the doggy boys. <laughs> ah. They're moderately tough. They're a bit beefy. Big beefy boys. All right, there's chests. I even forgot about that fact. I've played this map. I think this was the last map that I played, but I've already forgotten some things. It's fine, don't worry about it. I'm really glad that lava does way less damage than it does in Quake. I just pressed F5. I literally pressed F5 to save.
yellow key needed for that. They were saving that one up. is an auto map. Ah! I've, I found, like, I saw this thing and thought it was odd when I played this level before, but I didn't actually figure out how to open it. I kept trying to shoot this thing, not whatever that was in the center. Okay, so there's like shootable button whatever things. Auto map, probably. I wonder if it, I mean, it wouldn't show the location of secrets. That would be ridiculous, right? What does it show? I guess I have to just kind of guess at what these are. Oh, no, that tells me. So these are all enemies. Weapons. I don't really need to know about every weapon. That's not too important. It's more like points of interest and nexus points and runes. Yeah, of course it does not show secrets. Why would it? Yeah, we'll see if the levels get complicated enough for me to uh, need to use that. Yeah, I think there was a secret up here. Ah. And that just loops around to here, which we were about to go to anyway. Oh, that's the yellow key card. Amplification chamber.
feels so good to play. open now so we get the yellow key card. Oh, I've never tried shooting those bodies just resting around. They do explode. Cool, I guess. Oh yeah, I think that opens this, yeah. All my weapons are just drenched in blood. <laughs> oh, it's going away. But yeah, we have the yellow key card now, so we can open a whole bunch of little doors. We just went in that one. We came out of that one. Okay. Oh, we can press this button now. Mm. I think that's ultimately where we're supposed to go, over there. But what is this? Oh. Oh, that's a big boy. Forgot about you. Let's get him near these explosive barrels. D did I kill him? Oh, I did. Right, this is where they introduced the freaking minigun. And I love what they have you use it on. Like right away, they give you the minigun and they're like, okay, you need something to shoot with this thing, right? Enjoy. Enjoy. 
can't even see anything. Too much blood. But look, it's like it's got spikes on the end of it. Do you see those? If you hold down right click, it uh, keeps it spinning so that you can fire instantly instead of having to wait for it to spin up if you just left click. The downside though is that it makes you, um, it makes you unable to sprint if you're spinning up. Exit. Hold on. We have three to five secrets and everything but one enemy. Hmm. It doesn't tell me how many, like, materials I'm missing. Yeah, zero deaths again. Nice. I believe that was the last map that I played before, so from here on out, I don't even know what to expect. Now we got six out of eight iron fragments. Much better. Fuel. Small military depot used to prototype new fuels from the minerals found in the asteroid. Oh, this is, uh... Yeah, it's another type of pistol ammo gun. Probably even less efficient than the shredders, I would imagine, but obviously puts out a lot of bullets. That looks suspicious. Aha! level. That's such a cool skybox. Get that up there. Oh, I think we need to continue in the level and jump from up there. Oh, those are new. Oh, those are cool looking. <laughs> Okay, so they explode with, like, poisonous goo? 
when they die? Okay. And that hurts, as you'd expect. That looks so cool, the way it's bubbling and frothing. There are so many particles and just stuff covering the screen and the ground and everything, and oh, I love it. It's just messy. It's such a messy game. What's in here? Oh my. Barrels can roll? Oh my god, there's physics for them. That's so cool. Okay, so that's obviously a whole thing, so what's over this way? I want that. Well, something just exploded. Wait a minute. We can aim through there. There's a little crack in the glass. I'm not exactly sure what happened down there. Something exploded, someone died. That was a secret? What? What secret? Oh, that. They hurt other enemies when they explode. I don't think it was close enough. We keep collecting rockets, which means we're probably going to get a rocket launcher soon. <laughs> nice. that recharge no oh it's another big dude minigun dude what's up dude
You got secrets up there for me. I bet you do. Oh, actually, no, I think that's where I was supposed to go. I wonder what the other way was then. Oh, no. I want to go back. Yeah, it looks like it does hurt the other enemies. It doesn't, like, uh, do damage when it explodes, though. It just does damage over time. Yeah, there's no way I'm fitting back up that cube. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, hello. That's a secret. Oh, text? Ice factor. It was discovered that the green tinted liquid can be weaponized. Its unique properties allow it to instantly freeze objects under the right conditions. For safety, we keep its temperature regulated. Green tinted liquid, that would be the, those new enemies that explode with that green goo. Instantly freeze objects under the right conditions. Well, I haven't seen it freeze anything so far. didn't feel like cold. That felt like pain. Oh, I could have just pressed that to smush them all. Damn. Oh well, got most of my ammo back there. Smushy, smushy. I see a secret in there, yes. That one's green. I don't know if I meant to shoot it or just go in the goo. Guess I'll just go in the goo. Didn't even really take any damage. Oh, I'm not sure about getting back though. Hmm. Oh no, we're fine.
Look at that thing pound away. I'm wondering if this might be a thing. How are we looking? Everything but one enemy and two secrets. Hmm. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Continuing our journey, I guess. Still zero deaths? Really curious what we're going to be spending our materials on. Now it looks like we actually have a choice between two different things. Oh! Here we go! Shop! Place to buy advanced weaponry and other assortments. I was expecting it to be like a menu, but this is an actual level. Interesting. It did say there was one material in this level too. Oh. Uh, well, I guess that wouldn't kill me, would it? No secrets and no enemies, but yeah, there is one material somewhere. That... Yep, that hurts. What a grimy place. Rocket launcher. Shredders. Shotgun. Let me in. I know there's a material here. Wait, that's the shop. Then what are these? Are these like test grounds for trying them out? Oh yeah, fully charged shot can be very accurate. Success. Is that it? Okay, I guess it just teaches you a little thing about the weapon in case you don't know it. Shredders. Burst fire with both. Yep. One SMG for more accuracy at a distance. Mm -hmm. I don't even have a rocket launcher. Yeah, it doesn't even switch to it because I don't have it yet. Double jump? There's a double jump? Apparently tier 2's locked. Dash boost, tier 2. Bandolier, tier 3. Super shotgun. Is that... Four barrels. <laughs> He's got four barrels. I need one more um, ore fragment. Oh, is this a freebie? Ore can be used to purchase weapons and upgrades from the shop. Yeah, free ore. Plasma rifle. Mammoth. Auto shotgun. Swarmer. Swarmer. 
So I guess at the moment, my choices are between a super shotgun and a plasma rifle. Hmm. Well, I haven't found any plasma ammo. Whereas I have found shotgun ammo, obviously. So I guess I'm going to go with a super shotgun. Yes. Oh, this thing is beautiful. What a chunky boy. Now, how is this going to fire? Let's see. Oh, look at all four go in and come out. So it can fire pretty fast with left click. But only fires one barrel at a time. But what does right click do? Fires all four. Yes. That's what I was hoping for. So yeah, this is quite different from whatever the other shotgun's called. Maybe just shotgun. Because this thing is relatively accurate. Whereas this thing is very inaccurate and cannot be made more accurate. So this is only for super up close. But yeah, I bet the four shots would probably take out one of those doggy boys even from up close. Oh, now we can try out the... Wait, we can try out the super shotgun that unlocked when we got it. So then why is the rocket launcher there when I don't have it? Maybe it's possible to get it with a secret or something? I don't know. Right click to quad shot. Large enemies. Hell yeah. Holy shit, this music goes hard for just leaving the shop. <laughs> this is my leaving the shop theme song. Fuck yeah. But yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it there. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when we come back, we're gonna take our quad shotgun to Wretch, an old sewage treatment plant that has been overrun by chaos monsters. <laughs>